Hello, I'm Chris Grimmer. I'm an astrophotographer and photographer based in Norfolk. And we're here today at St. Bennett's Abbey in the heart of the Norfolk Broads. I'm looking to do a little bit of astrophotography with the new three-legged thing, Charles 2.0. Current conditions is a little bit overcast and cloudy, but the forecasts are looking promising. So hopefully this, later this evening, once the darkness arrives, we can get this tripod for its paces and see what it can do for astrophotography. The version we're using today includes the Airhead Pro. So on the Airhead Pro, there are two tension adjusters, um, one for panning and one for full control of the bore head. Um, these are full metal construction with a textured surface. So if like me, when you're out, your hands are cold or wet, um, there's never been an issue with trying to grip. In all the images I've taken so far with this tripod, there's never been any star trailing or anything that would suggest any movement in the mount once it's set up. So included with the tripod is a very robust and very nice carry bag. And once the tripod is fully folded, this um, sits perfectly inside. So if you're traveling around, that means you can easy to carry it and uh, move it around. Also, it just means the tripod's gonna be well protected when in bouncing around in the back of your car. And they also actually include a very handy carabiner style tool. This means you can adjust any of the tripod itself. So any, anything that needs tightening or even adjust, adding the arc of foot to your camera, you've got that tool so you can tighten that down. So the tripod legs consist of three sections. Um, these are secured by twist locks, um, very nice full metal um, with rubber pads, so easy to grip, especially for the likes of astrophotographers like myself, in the dark and the cold, nice and easy to handle. The center column is also controlled by a twist grip. The legs um, can be splayed. Um, these are controlled for a, a, a clip that's pulled out and the legs can be adjusted. Um, and once inserted is very secure, so this um, full metal, so there's definitely no chance of the legs slipping. So on the bottom of the tripod legs, um, on this model we have rubber feet. Um, these can be removed um, and you can actually put metal spikes on them. So if you were anywhere where there's more rugged terrain, it would allow you to adapt the tripod to the, the conditions. Um, we're about to head out, let's get set up, looking for some Milky Way shots this evening. So um, with this tripod, I have no doubt I can get in the perfect position. And um, with the ball head, this means I can ad adjust very easily just to get, get that composition perfect. Um, just while we're doing that, I might just go grab a cup of coffee just to warm up as the temperatures aren't particularly great today. So just while we've still got some light, this is what we'll have a little, little walk around the Abbey, just to have a look around, just to see what there is. This is a location I've shot many, many times before. It's always worth just checking out. You never know if you're gonna find a detail or an angle you've never seen before. Um, would always recommend if it's a new location, always come down in the daylight. Um, you never quite know what you're gonna find in the dark. Um, we've planned it, we've, been, we've, we've used the apps and the websites so we know where the Milky Way will be how it will be positioned, um, but it's still nice just to come have a look in the daylight, just to make sure nothing has changed since you last visited. I would always recommend uh, visiting the location in daylight. You never know what you're gonna find. If you're coming up on an evening, um, you don't know whether the roads will be open. You may find that the car park gate's closed. It's just worth visiting, checking the signs, make sure you can access it. And also you don't know whether another photographer may have beaten you to the spot that you're looking for. So it's always best just to make sure you're there that little bit early, trying to get the daylight, find the best spots. Another advantage of arriving early is just in case that is closed. Clear nights in this country are very, very sparse. So actually you're not gonna waste a night because it gives you the opportunity to get to another location. Um, more often than not, there will be areas where you can get to, um, or you might just need to rethink your shoot on the fly, but at least that gives you that time to get planned, get set up and make sure you don't miss those very rare clear opportunities. Yeah, prime example of getting somewhere early, um, a few years back I was down on the Norfolk coast trying to photograph a supermoon rising. Got to my location, it was all planned, and knew exactly where I needed to be, what time. Thankfully, made sure I was there a good couple hours early, um, just to make sure everything was okay. Upon arriving, found actually that um, there was major building work going on just in front of the area where I wanted to shoot. So actually the position I needed to be, there would have been a crane jib right across the middle of the shot. But because I was there early, it meant I was actually able to have a rethink, recheck the apps, moved myself, climbed slightly higher up, so I was able to shoot over top of the obstacle, and actually it got my shot. Um, another thing is, 
in that situation, don't always try and go for the shot that you've seen everyone else do. Um, it actually gives you a prime opportunity to find a new spot, try something slightly different. By doing this, it gives you that slightly unique perspective. It's something slightly different, something that people may have never seen before. It actually makes it stand out more. With St Bennett's Abbey, it's a slightly unusual location. It's an abbey ruins, but in the midst of the abbey ruins, there is a 19th century or 18th century uh, windmill. So it's slightly unusual, but at the front of the abbey, there's a really nice archway, so it actually leads to a very nice shot. Um, so what I'm just looking at to do here is to try and position myself. So once we have the dark skies, just to make sure I can get the composition I need with the archway, with some of the Milky Way and the dark skies, through the archway but not losing too much with the windmill that's conveniently in the middle of the archway as well. So one advantage at St Bennett's is the car park is fairly close to where we're actually shooting um, but for those longer routes um, a lot more often than not you've, you're potentially walking a, a kilometre or more to get to the, your shoot location. Um, with the, the Charles II it is incredibly light um, and bin magnesium alloy it still keeps a lot of strength. Um, this is the most secure tripod I've used. Um, once it's packed in that carry case on your shoulder, you don't even notice you're carrying it, um, which is a real benefit when you, you've got camera cases and in my case, star trackers and other stuff as well, which is, adds quite a lot of weight. And if you're walking a fair distance, it, it adds up. So actually having a very light tripod is brilliant. So not only is this tripod light and extremely robust, it's very versatile. As you can see here, I've, with removing one screw, I've been able to reverse the center con console, re-secure it, so no worries of it actually slipping or going anywhere. But as you can see, in this position, I've been able to get the camera a lot closer to the ground. This will give me that perspective of getting the shot through the archway and what I'm hoping to do later. And even if you didn't want to have the center console, the, the actual ball head will come off and attach directly to the tripod. So it can give you even more secure secure fitting. Um, but as I said, in this in this stance, because of the camera's weight is actually holding the tripod down as well. Even with the breeze we've got today, I have no concerns that we'll get any star um, elongation or, or shake in the images when we're actually using this later on this evening.